Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. We will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end, we calculate and analyze the financial ratios. I am going to do this with you throughout the entire video, so it's like we're doing it together. I also answer every single comment, so please leave a comment if you have a question or if you have any suggestions. The company we're going to look at is Seven Generations Energy. This is an oil and gas ENP. That's exploration and production, which is the early stage of energy production. This includes searching and extracting of oil and gas. This company has a market cap of 1.5 billion Canadian dollars. And let's see what they're trading at. They're trading at 4.58 a share. So it's a penny stock. And the way you value a company is you have to estimate the future free cash flows, then discount that back to today's value. And that's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm pulling their actual free cash flow. And this is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And then I'm going to pull the net income, which is the profit and loss on the income statement. And we also need the revenue, which are the sales for each year. That's also on the income statement. And their revenue almost tripled from 2016 to 2018, but then it dropped a little in 2019. They also had negative free cash flow in two years. Maybe they were investing in their company. Let's look at a capital structure. So the interest they pay in our debt is $137 million. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to liability section. So no current debt, long-term debt of $2 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. Since interest payments are tax deductible, let's get their effective tax rate. We'll go back to the income statement. The income before tax is $673 million. And let's get their income taxes, $233 million. So the effective tax rate is 35%. The cost of debt is 4.4%. Now we need the beta to get the cost of equity, and the beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a really high beta, 3.23, so the stock is really volatile. That means it's risky. Let's go back to the balance sheet, get their current assets. And we need the current assets to calculate the current ratio later. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. Current assets of 378 million. And that's $9 million of cash and $299 million of receivables. Let's get the current liabilities. That's $438 million. And the only thing they have listed is $36 million of other current liabilities. Stockholders' equity is the value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's $5.2 billion. And that's $3.6 billion of common stock and $1.4 billion of retained earnings. Retain earnings is the income that's not paid out as dividends. Let's go back to the income statement and get their operating income. That's $697 million. Let's look at a capital structure. 28% debt, cost of debt 4.4%. 72% equity, cost of equity 27%. And they have a really high WAC, 21%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. And these estimates are based off of the average change in the prior four years. The next step is we have to discount these dollar amounts back to today's value, and that's here in green. And we get a value of the entire company, $9.2 billion. We divide that by 328 million shares, and we get an intrinsic stock price of $28. It's trading at about 460. So it's trading at an 84% discount, so it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at $33. They're even higher. So when a company's really volatile, the stock could go way up or way down. So there's always that risk there. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. So it was trading close to $30 a few years back, but it keeps dropping. Let's look at the financial ratios. Great PE, a great price to sales, and a great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 3.2. So investors are paying $3 for $1 of net income. That's a really great ratio. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. 
And I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.5. So investors are paying 50 cents for $1 revenue. Amazing. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.3. So investors are paying 30 cents for $1 of book value. Book value per share at 1587 indicates that if the company went bankrupt today, it will be able to give each shareholder $15.87, even though each share of stock is only worth $4.58. The reason these ratios look so good is because the numerator is stock price, and stock price has come down so much, it's been cut in half or a third or a quarter, and it looks so great, the ratios. Let's look at the other ratios. Current ratio is not good, interest coverage ratio is good, and ROE is bad. Current ratio is current assets of current liabilities, so they cannot cover the current liabilities, but they're pretty close. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 9%, so they don't provide a good value to their equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can cover their interest payments five times, so they're doing really good there. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I did videos on Baker Hughes, Canadian Natural, Diversified Gas and Oil, Denberry, who's in bankruptcy right now, Marathon Oil, Occidental Petroleum, Shore Corp, Transatlantic Petroleum, Texas Pacific, U.S. Energy Corp, and Whitecap Resources. And seven generations is right here. And if they have a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So in terms of P.E., price to sales and price to book, they are much better than the average in the industry. It's interesting that Denberry is the best in two of the three categories and they follow bankruptcy. In terms of current ratio, they are lower than the average, they're below one. ROE, even though it's low, they're still better than the average. And in terms of market cap, they're much smaller than average. I converted all these numbers to US dollars, so that's 1.1 billion US dollars. And the average is 5.4 billion US dollars. Let me know what you think of this video, think of the industry, and make sure to leave a comment if you have a question. I answer all the questions, and if you have any ideas, definitely let me know. Thanks for watching.